Everything is interconnected. Everything goes with everything else. I knew a woman who got in an accident in an elevator. She hadn't taken any drugs. But in this accident, she was pinned with her leg caught in the mechanism, and she was there for half an hour before anybody could get to her rescue. She was having agonies. But she knew that she simply had to wait. There was nothing to do about it, so she completely accepted her situation. And she said that in that time, she realized, as to put it in her, her own words, there is not a single grain of dust in this whole universe that is out of place. In other words, that peculiar, painful, unwanted situation was somehow made acceptable and all right because it fitted in to a harmonious arrangement which involved everything that was happening, that had happened, or that ever would happen. And we are, I think, really in need of experiencing the relationship of the individual to the physical world in a way that is more positive, more constructive, more friendly, more close than that which expresses itself in a hostile technology bent on the domination and the conquest of nature considered as something alien to the human spirit mechanical, thoughtless, and stupid that surrounds us as uh, the mere featureless energy behind the galaxies. If indeed it were possible for many of us to have a sensation of not just uh, merely belonging in this world, but being it. If we could feel that our separate individuality is a coming and going expression of what it is that is happening through all the cycles of time and generations of cosmoses, we'd be able to cool it a bit and not be so frantic in our pursuit of survival. Now then, in the middle 1950s, a British psychiatrist by the name of Humphrey Osmond persuaded a British novelist by the name of Aldous Huxley to take a dose of mescaline. And in the thought that at the time this was a drug which induced states of consciousness similar to schizophrenia. Humphrey Osmond uh, realized that Aldous Huxley was a marvelous master of words and therefore it might be a good idea to see if this experience were given to a man who could describe things in a wonderfully accurate and vivid way, we might learn something about what it does. Aldous Huxley didn't simply deliver a private report to the doctors. He rushed into print and published a book called The Doors of Perception, in which he said, in effect, that he felt, from his point of view, that having taken mescaline gave him an experience which he could not but identify with the great mystical experience of man's integration with the universe which, of course, had been known uh, through all history. When I read this, as a student of the psychology of religion, I was naturally fascinated, but unbelieving. I thought, you know, Aldous sometimes goes off the deep end. I knew him very well. And I know he had a kind of enthusiasm for all kinds of novelty. He had foreseen in his novel Brave New World that there might be 
a way of drugging human beings into sort of perpetual contentment and happiness so that they would give no further trouble to each other. And of course everybody had put this down and said uh, that would be the end of the human spirit. And so I felt maybe this is another of Aldous's weird things and uh, slightly dismissed it. But then the psychiatrists who had involved him in this uh, finally got in touch with me because they said, you're supposed to be an authority on the psychology of religion and we'd like to know what you think about uh, drug-induced mysticism. So I was foolish enough at the time to accept an invitation to um, stand in for Aldous Huxley at a meeting of the American Psychiatric Association in Los Angeles. He couldn't be present and they asked me to talk about this in his place. I had not at that time experienced any of these drugs and I simply gave a theoretical talk on the subject and said if indeed they do produce something like the deepest religious experience, I would imagine that it would be like the sensation of swimming with water wings.